So today's rundown will include opening remarks from Buster, followed by Greg, Larry, and Farhan. And then we will open it up to questions for Buster. Uh, I would like to note that Greg, Larry, and Farhan will be available for any one-on-ones or um, group interviews following the press conference. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Buster. All right, thank you. Uh, As you know, I'm here today announcing that I'm retiring. A lot of you out there probably know my first instinct is not to run and get behind a microphone. Um, But as I thought about what I wanted to say today, I realized that uh, it's such a unique opportunity to publicly thank so many people uh, that helped me get here, uh, helped me stay here, and uh, fulfill uh, a lifelong <clears throat> dream playing Major League Baseball. So first, I'd like to thank the woman sitting up here with me today. <clears throat> Kristen, most importantly, thank you for being an amazing mom to our kids. Uh, thank you for the love and support from the first game to the last. Uh, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago uh, that I remember you sitting at Lee County High School games with your dad. Um, and then uh, Florida State University, and then just a couple of years later, you were in the stands uh, cheering with the rest of the Giants uh, community as we won our first title. Um, <clears throat> thanks for being there with me to celebrate all the great moments. I think even more importantly, thanks for being there on some of the lower ones. You know better than anybody how hard sometimes I would, uh, how hard sometimes I would take not performing the way that I wanted to. Uh, but your love and perspective about what was truly important helped me through those times. I know these years out on the West Coast will be some of our fondest as we look back on them, and I'm so excited to continue sharing life with you and watching our kids grow. Lee, Addie, Olivia, and Ada, your mom and I are so proud of the people that you're becoming. We're so blessed to have kind, caring, and empathetic children. Being your dad is the greatest joy in my life. <clears throat> to my parents, thanks, number one, for just being great parents. Thanks for setting good examples and being role models. All of us as parents know there's so much that goes into that. So just thank you, number one, for being great parents. Thanks for the time spent at the hundreds of practices for me and my siblings, for teaching me the responsibility for caring for other people. Thanks for teaching me how to compete, uh, how to handle victories, and how to handle the defeats. I'm not strictly talking about sports. Most importantly, thank you for giving me the foundation of knowing that baseball is a vessel that can be, can be used to create wonderful memories and impact people's lives, but ultimately it's not what defines you. We're looking forward to having more time with all of you. To my team at CAA, Jeff and Marissa, for the last 15 years, we've had a relationship that have grown and blossomed because of the trust that we've all built between us. Kristen and I feel very fortunate to have had both of you a part of our team in the entire way. Our business relationships have definitely turned into friendships that will last a lifetime. Thank you both for all your hard work and your loyalty. There's a group here that I've worked closely with over my years, Shana, Bertha, Tess, and Matt. Thank you for all your behind the scenes work that doesn't get recognized a lot of times. Chris and I have both enjoyed getting to know all of you and cherish the friendships that have come from that. The Giants ownership, front office, coaches, and training staff, there are so many peoples and teams within the teams that help us players perform to our highest capability. There's no doubt that the success this organization has had the last 10 plus years is a direct correlation to those people that I just mentioned. To the entire medical staff, without you, I might have been done five years ago. Gresh and A. Ray, thank you both for your friendship, for truly caring about players, for coming to work a lot of days before anyone else and leaving after everyone else has gone home. 
Nobody better than you guys. To the old crew, Boach, thanks for being here today. Whoa, thanks for being here. The Sabes, Bobby, thank you for being here. Rags, Billy, Yardy, Bam Bam. I have so many great memories when I think about all of you. Thank you for being leaders for such a long time. I know how fortunate I am to have spent the first 10 years playing underneath you. And like I mentioned with Gresh and A-Ray, thank you for caring about the people that work for you. All these great memories that we have together wouldn't mean anything if we didn't have great relationships. I think it's a big reason why the fans got behind all of our teams the way they did. They could see that the players and coaches that were taking the field cared about one another, and they wanted each other to succeed. Larry, Greg, Rob, thanks for hiring good people. Thanks for bringing great players to this organization. Thanks for always making an effort to humanize the players to the fans. It's probably something early in my career that I thought was a waste of time. <laughs> and I didn't understand it. But as the years have passed, I realize just how impactful that can be. And if it impacts one person in a positive way, it's worth the time and effort. It's not something you realize when you first become part of a major league organization, but it doesn't take long to realize that some are better than others. This place here has always been a first class operation. So you, you guys sitting up here, thank you for com your commitment to the team, but also to the community. Farhan, Scott, Cap, our time together was relatively short, but we experienced a lot together. Unfortunately, a global pandemic, but then fortunately followed by a record setting season of 107 wins. I really enjoy getting to know you guys. I know this organization is in great hands with you guys at the helm. So I've been blessed to play in a league that has the most talented baseball players in the world. It's a fraternity that I've watched from afar from the time I was five years old until I arrived in September 2009. And one of the greatest benefits that comes along with that is that you get to meet a lot of great teammates that have very similar interests as you do. You make certain friends throughout the years that you know will last beyond the game. I feel very fortunate to make some of those friendships over the years, and I look forward to them lasting for years to come. It would be impossible for me to thank each and every teammate I played with but I had the pleasure to not only play along supremely talented baseball players, but good men, good husbands, and good fathers. There are some teammates that I can consider mentors. There's some teammates that we have celebrated Thanksgiving with. There's some teammates that last year during the pandemic, we met over Zoom for a Bible study once a week. They're teammates that I've shared the joys and the hardships of life with. I'm truly grateful for these relationships. I understand the time commitment, preparation, and hard work that goes into being ready to play each and every day. So all my teammates, thank you for the commitment that you made to our teams over the years. And lastly, to the fans. The last week to 10 days, I've been thinking, how do you thank a fan base? And the Giants fan base is, is more than just fans. Uh, it's a community. And that sense of community is something we as players could feel in the ballpark when we took the field each night. I ho also hope it's worked the other way. I hope over the years you've been able to see in our teams a sense of pride that we've all taken in coming together each night and each day working hard with a common goal and pushing each other along the way. And thinking back oddly, some of the best times when you look back on them are the challenging times. When you're going through them, they don't tend to be very fun. But when you get on the other side of them, you realize that's when you've truly grown. I think that's one of the best things about sports and hopefully something a lot of fans can identify with as well. 
Over the years, I've heard a lot of stories about what the Giants mean to different fans or what baseball means to different fans. When I think back on those stories, there's usually one or two common denominators, and it's family and friends. When I was a child, one of my earliest baseball memories was of Sid Bream, a speed guy like me, <laughs> of the Atlanta Braves sliding into home to beat the Pittsburgh Pirates, in game, Pittsburgh Pirates in Game 7 of the NLCS to send the Braves to the World Series. To be able to share in the joy with my granddad that Christmas as he proudly displayed a picture of Sid Bream on his t-shirt sliding into home just underneath the tag is a memory I'll never forget. <clears throat> I'm sure there are kids out there today who have watched me play my entire career. They might actually be adults now. <laughs> and there's parents and there's grandparents, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews, cousins, they can still remember exactly where they were when Edgar Renneria hit the game-winning homer in Texas that led the 2010 San Francisco Giants to their first World Series title. Or when Sergio Romo stood on the mound, shook me off from throwing a slider, which still scares me to this day, <laughs> and snuck a fastball past Miguel Cabrera to clinch the second title in three years. Or when Madison Bumgarner came out of the bullpen in Game 7 in Kansas City and 45,000 people went deathly silent. Because they knew at that point the game and the World Series was over. Or maybe you remember where you were when Matt Cain stood on the back of the mound. He gazed up at the crowd, taking it all in before he recorded the final out of the first ever perfect game in Giants franchise history. To me, this is what encapsulates baseball. It's a lot more than just winning or losing games, although the wins do feel a lot better. But it's about, it's the, it's about the time spent with family, the countless nights and days pulling for your team, riding the emotions of the highs, riding the emotions of the lows, and ultimately enjoying the people that you're with along the way and making great memories together. I'm so very humbled to have played a part in some of those memories. To the fans, thank you for all your support I've received the last 13 seasons. And I look forward to creating new memories of my own and sharing them with family and friends as I pull for the Giants the rest of my life. Thank you. Greg? Well, thank you, Buster. And uh, now that my tears have finally dried from his call a week ago, I simply want to say thank you, Buster, to all the incredible contributions to the Giants and say that we fully support your thoughtful and difficult decision. Ann Killian said it best this morning when she referred to Buster as the standard bearer of Giants excellence. He not only excelled on the field, but he was a quiet leader that led by example. He has been the consummate professional both on and off the field. I also want to thank Kristen for giving so much of Buster to the Giants over the last 14 years or so. Thank you, Kristen. Buster cares deeply about the game, and for me, he's been a tremendous sounding board, as I call him with questions over the last few years. I've gained valuable insights into the state of the game and how we should make thoughtful and incremental changes to improve the game. This is not the end. This is hopefully a new chapter for Buster and the Giants, and we are working toward a long-term role to keep him part of the Giants family. Buster, thank you for a wonderful run. While we'll miss seeing you behind the plate next year, we understand and we support your decision. You will forever be a Giant to all of us, not only, as one writer said this morning, are you represented by about every other dog collar in the Bay Area, <laughs> Buster and Posey, but you will forever be imprinted on the hearts of Giants fans. Thank you, Buster.
Larry? I'm not sure Buster will remember this, but <clears throat> we have a tradition at the Giants um, when a draft pick is signed uh, before he goes out to the uh, minor league assignment, usually in July or August, um, comes down and sits down by the dugout with us for a game. And um, in 2008, it was Buster's turn. We had, uh, of course, a very exciting signing. It was, it was the fifth overall pick, and it was exciting being in the draft room with Bobby Evans and Brian Sabian and John Barr, who developed a relationship with Buster and Buster's family, our lead scout who, uh, who scouted Buster. So anyway, in the um, first time I had a chance to spend any time with Buster and Kristen, and um, a little fairy tale ran through my mind in, um, on that night in 2008, in August 2008. Um, the fairy tale was we're going to have a long, productive player that will be a, a giant and for um, a long time, maybe even a career, and help make memories for the fans. We'd have a player that would be adored by the fans a player that would be involved in the community in meaningful ways, a high integrity uh, player, a great teammate, and also part of this fairy tale was maybe a player that would help us lead us to our first championship in San Francisco. Having um, in 2008, we had gone 50 years at that point without a championship. But even more powerful than that fairy tale was um, the uh, fact that as we went through the next 12 years together, 13 years, bookended by a championship in his first year and division championship this year as well as franchise record um, uh, performance um, this year with 107 wins, that gold-plated bookends, by the way, uh, got to know Buster the person, and Kristen the person, and the family, the Posey family. And just to share a few reflections on the people that uh, we're honoring today. Um, on the field, the on the field Buster, not performance-wise, but all the other things he brings as a person, I'll never forget in 2010, and Boach can talk, speak volumes about this, um, as a rookie, the way he handled our pitching staff. The disparate personalities of Sergio Romo, Brian Wilson, Tim Lincecum, Madison Bumgarner, Matt Cain, on and on. Unbelievable. I learned a lot about psychology just seeing, watching that unfold. Um, I'll never forget the City Hall celebration in 2010 when Buster exhorted his teammates and said, we're going to go home for a couple weeks and then prepare and let's do this again. Remember that? I'll never forget um, one of the darkest days in my career in 2011, um, seeing Buster in the clubhouse the night of his injury, and then tracking over time his unbelievable commitment and the amazing work of our training staff, and doctors, but climbing that mountain back the next year to MVP, batting champ, and um, of course another championship. And then I'll never forget this season and what Buster's done to, with his leadership in bringing a new group together, new coaches and, and uh, new staff together to make memories. And then off the field, never saying no to an autograph seeker, never, always looking them in the eye and signing the autograph and saying hello, showing respect, treating every member of our front office staff with respect and dignity, community relations, media relations, the clubhouse personnel, everyone, that, telling them how important they are to him. 
And then early on with Kristen, um, hearing their interest in getting involved in the community and establishing a foundation. But what was really impressive about it was that they wanted to do their, their homework, do their research, get involved in understanding. I remember one meeting we had with a barrier of philanthropist at his home during, it was a day of a night game, and Buster and Kristen were there and talking about um, what they wanted to do and asking questions and really learning. And from that came the foundation affiliation with UCSF uh, and amazing work for pediatric cancer. And then just two other things. Buster's character. Humble, ultimate humility, um, always deflecting, uh, giving others credit. I'll never forget the trophy tour with Willie Mays back in New York when we went back to New York after one of the championships and how Buster it was wanted to be an ode to Willie and also with Yogi Berra and going to Yogi Berra's museum and Buster um, paying homage to, to uh, one of the great catchers that he said he learned so much from. Um, and then finally when also receiving a phone call uh, and hearing Buster, um, his feelings, his reasons, his family priorities, his life priorities, what jumped out at me was just one word, and that is respect. Respect for the decision, respect for the person and the family we have come to know and love. And just the gratitude for the journey he's taken us on uh, since this fairy tale began in 2008. Thanks. Yeah. Farhan. Thanks, uh, Matt. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before I got into my remarks, uh, I don't know if this is the right time for it, but I kind of just wanted to ask, is this like a definite, like for sure thing? Or, uh, <laughs> I just had to ask. Um, uh, you know, I, I have to admit that uh, I flew into town this morning and uh, you know landed at, at SFO and I kind of wandered around the gate area for a little longer than uh, was appropriate, I think, because kind of getting in a car and heading over here, I think like for a lot of us in the organization and, and fans around tuning in, you know, made it real. and. Um, uh, you know, the reality of kind of a future without you and your family and how much you've meant to us, at least on the field, uh, um, you know, has been something, you know, for us to all digest. And, you know, even with that mixed feeling is, I know, a sense of overwhelming gratitude for everything you've meant to this organization, um, to all the people in it, all you've accomplished for the organization and the city. Um, I want to acknowledge a few people that, that Buster mentioned. I'm up here representing our organization, our baseball group, but um, you know, wanted to recognize uh, Bobby Evans, obviously Boach, um, as well as Brian Sabian and John Barr, who I know wanted to be here but but weren't able to. They could easily be up here representing the organization as well. I know how important they were to you all and. Um, you know, I, I think on behalf of the organization, just have a lot of gratitude for everything they did to help bring you along, to make you a giant, um, and uh, I know they're very, very proud of that. Um, you know, I've been thinking, as we all have been, about our association with Buster, and it's something that I think all of us have a great appreciation for. Um, and I think back to, you know, when I first started with the Giants in, in late 2018, and um, you know, there there were some raised eyebrows when I was brought over. Um, there was, uh, you know, talk about, you know, me maybe being a Dodger mole or, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe being, uh, you know, a numbers guy that uh, maybe wasn't in tune with the Giants ethos. Um, and and uh, in all honesty, uh, I was a little little rattled by that. Um, it was it was. Uh, it was a real adjustment for me personally and professionally. 
Um, but one of the first people that reached out to me after I got this job was Buster. And um, he made a point of reaching out and, and not just shooting a congratulatory text, but said he wanted to meet and talk. And um, he met me down the clubhouse a few days after I started as a giant and spent two or three hours with me in the coach's room just talking baseball. And um, you know he's probably sizing me up too <laughs> in, that, in those moments. Um, but you know I have to say there's nothing anybody else could have done that made me feel more comfortable and more like a giant than you taking that time um, you know in my first few days I mean that those were the moments when I truly felt like I became a giant and I share that story because I think all of us have these stories about Buster just the incredible empathy he has the ability he has to elevate people and put them in the best position to do their jobs. And that's not just teammates or the pitchers that he caught, but it's all of us. It's our coaches and managers and people in the front office. And, um, you know, for all your individual accolades, I think that's what people will remember and appreciate the most out of these 12 years is, is what you meant to them personally. Um, that was a... Um, a great talk and I think as a lot of people would attest to I think you know Boach and, and Cap as, as two of your managers would say they didn't just view you as a player but as a thought partner and uh, you know I, I think that's that's a really high compliment you know and, and I and I think Boach and uh, sorry uh, Sabes and, and Bobby would probably say the same thing they, they view you that way too um, you know I probably got a little too comfortable with it too fast because I remember um, a couple months after that first conversation, uh, this was Boach's last year, and, and Vegas was starting to have some fun with it in terms of who the successors <laughs> might be. They, they started posting some odds, and uh, um, I remember one uh, book came out with odds that had uh, Buster as a 10,000 to one uh, 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 <laughs> odds uh, to become player manager. Um, I saw that, I kind of circled it, I, I shot a text over to Buster and I said, I just figured out how we're going to pay for Bryce Harper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in typical Buster fashion, he was like, hey, you know, that's funny, but I'm, I'm actually a better candidate than some of the people with better odds than me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I also over the last 10 days have had time to, to reflect on the 2020 season. Um, and, uh, you know, you're opting out. Um, it's wonderful to see your two beautiful girls, twins, here, and you know, obviously the organization was fully supportive of that decision. Um, and as a baseball group, I think we just picked up the pieces and figured we would do the best we could. And you know, we had some nice moments in that 2020 season, but I look back on it now and I realize we were lost. You know, we were lost, and I don't think I fully appreciate it, and maybe all of us fully appreciate it until we had you back this year. And the difference you made to this team this year and everything we were able to accomplish, um, you know, it was because of you. I, I think uh, all of us feel that way. And, you know, I, uh, it, it's difficult <laughs> to think about moving forward from a baseball standpoint without, without you, but, you know, I think for all of us, we choose to focus on just the incredible gratitude that you came back this year and did what you did and, and gave us such a memorable season. I mean, it's one that I and many Giants fans will never forget. So I want to thank you for that and obviously thank you for everything else that you've given this organization over the last 12 years and uh, just wish you and your family the very best. Thanks. Okay, at this time we can have uh, Larry, Greg, and Farhan take their seat. Okay, we can open it up to questions for Buster. Just a reminder, if you have a question, please raise your hand and we will get you a wireless microphone. Let's start here in the back with John Shea. Hello, Buster. Why exactly are you retiring and when did you come to this decision? Well, I, 
I kind of went into this last season uh, feeling like it might be my last, um, but just gave myself some space in my mind to uh, to be okay with deciding otherwise if I wanted to keep playing. And uh, I just really never wavered. Um, I think it really allowed me to, uh, not that you don't give it your all, but really, really empty the tank this year like I never have before. And uh, the reason I'm retiring is I, uh, I want I want to be able to do more stuff uh, from February to November with my family. Um, physically, it's much harder now. Uh, and to be honest, it's hard to, hard to enjoy it as much when there's the physical pain that you're dealing with uh, on a daily basis. Um, again, you know, I, I, I halfway joke with our training staff about uh, being done five years ago, but I, I don't know how far of a stretch that's really off. Um, without the work they were doing daily, you know, with the history of, of an ankle injury and, and then a hip. Um, yeah, it was just getting to the point where uh, things that I was enjoying were, uh, were not as joyful anymore. And um, no doubt the camaraderie with, with the teammates in the clubhouse and, uh, you know, the thrill of, of, of winning a great game I'll miss. Um, but yeah, I just think weighing all, weighing all those things, it, it, uh, was ultimately why I didn't really feel like I, I wavered at all during the year. Uh, in the back to the left, Janie. Hi, Buster. Hey. Uh, have you, have you thought about, you know, this, this organization does so much for its, its players who, who have stepped away from baseball and everybody wants to know if you'll stay involved somehow and maybe once your kids are a little older will you do some ambassador work that I, I know is very important to you off the field and with the community fund and th things along those lines or maybe do TV ha. yeah I love to talk uh, um, uh, yeah I've thought about it I think I've thought about it for for years now I think in my mind um, I'll always be part of the Giants organization. Um, I couldn't tell you in what capacity that is right now. Um, but Kristen and I and our kids are just so grateful that, what, that this was the organization that drafted us. Because um, you don't have any control of that, obviously, coming out of high school or college. So just very grateful uh, to have spent you know, the last 14 seasons uh, here with the Giants. Let's go right here in the back. Buster, I was talking with a number of fans yesterday, and there was a young man in his 20s who said, my dad had Joe Montana, and I had Buster Posey. <laughs> and he, another family said, he's like our family. And another fan said, you know, there was something about him being the heart and soul of this squad for the last 12 years. And it's a two-part question. What do you say to those fans? But also, all of them, when I asked about their favorite play and their favorite moment with you as a player, they brought up that Grand Slam in 2012 against Cincinnati and how much it meant to them. And many of them had tears in their eyes after that. Do you have a special moment? And uh, what do you say to those folks who feel like you're almost part of their family? Well, it's like I said in my statements. I mean, I think that's what's so special. Um about the relationship that that fans make with players, especially in baseball, because we're in their, we're on their their TV so many nights out of the year, and uh, Kristen and I actually talk about that a lot. How sometimes fans will come up to you and and they, from our standpoint, they're talking to you like they know you, and uh, and it's because we we're on TV so much and playing games and. As I mentioned uh, to Larry about the Giants' effort to humanize players, um, I think all of those things uh, just make it special. And, and I'm just I'm humbled. I'm humbled to uh, have been able to to help create great memories uh, for a fan base, and uh, it goes both ways because um, I got to play in this ballpark in front of 42,000 plus most nights. And uh, I fulfilled a childhood dream. Let's go to the right in the middle, Ann. 
Hey, Buster. Um, you, how much did taking last year off factor into this decision and the time you've got to spend with your family and maybe be in a little less pain and make you realize it would be a good time to just do one more year? And also, you mentioned um, our years on the West Coast, you and Kristen, are you, are you going to be staying in the area? Are you going to be moving to the back to the south? Yeah, I, th I think I think the the year off probably did play into the decision a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I as I mentioned, I I wasn't I didn't approach the season and say this is definitely it. Um, and then sorry, what was the next part of the question? Staying oh, staying here. Well, we'll we'll probably move we'll probably move back to Georgia uh, eventually. That's just where both of our families are. Um, we've uh, we've been on one coast. They've been on another coast for you know really since 2008 when I was drafted. Um, so we're we're definitely excited about uh, because of COVID. There's a there's a niece that we still haven't met yet. A lot of my family hasn't met our twin girls, and. Uh, it's uh, like a lot of families, I'm sure, that are separated. COVID's made it harder for people to see each other. Um, so we're very, very excited um, about being closer and being able to spend time with them. Brian? Congratulations, Buster and Kristen. Um, there was a theory that you were taking it more in after game 162. Maybe were we overreading your long looks into the crowd and everything? And was there more drinking in of the final week and celebration in game 162 in the environment yeah I think I think when it was over I, I tried to take it in a little bit more but because of the nature of, of the way the season ended with it being just you know down to the wire um, I think Greg told me the other day that his wife at one point was like this needs to be over because it's stressing you out too much um, I, yeah once it was over and, and we had won the division uh, I was I was definitely taken in I went back to the conversations that we had with Cap and Farhan at the beginning of the year and just said how we all co collectively were like, all right, if we're going to go do this, it's not fair to anybody in the room if we don't set out to win the division. Like trying to sneak into the wild card is just not going to work. And I think when Cap probably said that early on in spring training, there were some players that were probably rolling their eyes, you know, like, like a lot of people probably would that had heard that. But I, I think without that, that initial belief that it was what our goal was, I don't think it happens. And uh, so yeah, once it was over, I was, I was definitely just appreciating, I was appreciating looking at the fans that were packed into the stadium um, when last year there were no fans. And uh, just kind of reminiscing on uh, past years when getting to celebrate you know, whether you're making the playoffs or, or winning a big playoff series in that ballpark. Let's go to Mark. Buster, I know you've stated you weren't 100% sure that it was, this was going to be the last year, but it, it maybe seemed that way. Coming off of the opt-out, why was it important to maybe come back for at least one more year? Were there some specific things you felt like were kind of still on the table? Yeah, I think number one, and I'm, I told Jeff, my agent, at the beginning of the year, I said, you know, I want to individually prove to myself that I can still play this game at the highest level. Um, because, you know, not playing last year, not having a good year in 19, uh, you know, doubts creep in for sure. And uh, was able to get some good work in the off season, And, uh, Surrounded by just an incredible team, Farhan alluded to it a little bit, but uh, just it's very cliche to say a special group of guys because it's uh, it's overused. Uh, but I can honestly say that that clubhouse probably meshed and got along as well as I've ever seen. Um, just I don't think you accomplished what we did with you know the Dodgers breathing down our neck seemingly like since the trade deadline um, and it was looking back on it now I can say it was fun I don't know if it was necessarily fun <laughs> uh, in the middle of it the whole time but uh, that's the great thing about uh, you know being able to 
to push yourself and have other people and teammates around you that are pushing the same way. Um, because when it's all said and done, win or lose, you know if you, you, gave, you put it all out there, uh, it's a satisfying feeling. To the left, Andy. Hi, Buster. Congratulations on your career. Um, I think I remember in 2019, uh, my, about in spring training 20, actually, I asked you what you wanted to accomplish in the season, and you said, I want to feel like I can make an impact on the field again. And uh, you certainly were able to do that. You're going to be uh, comeback player of the year. I think it's the second time you've won it. Um, but what, what did that mean to you personally at a time when pitching is probably the best it's ever been for you to compete at the level you competed at? And did your success sway you even the least bit to want to keep going? Yeah, I think I know it's been uh, talked about quite a bit publicly this year. But honestly, uh, the three hitting coaches that we had last year, Donnie Ecker, Justin Veely, hopefully I said that right, Justin, uh, and Dustin Lynn. Uh, I mean, Farhan talks about when he was talking about everybody's kind of like, all right, what's this guy about? Um, I think there was definitely a, uh, a period for us as players when those guys came in. Like Donnie's a year older than me, and the other two guys are younger than I am. Um, so those guys being able to uh, establish trust with the veteran players as quickly as they did was, was pretty incredible. And I think Cap should get a lot of credit for putting the staff together like he did. Um, <laughs> because there would be certain moments in the year where I would kind of pick at uh, coaches and try to get them to say something about Cap. None of them would do it. They wouldn't bite. They just would not bite whatsoever. So the loyalty they all had for one another um, made a huge difference for all of us and getting back to the hitting I just think uh, those guys those guys uh, would do the advance work the analytics and all but they had such a, a great way of relaying the information to the players to where it's not uh, it's not a burden it, you, you actually start to crave it and want it um, because it's not it's not so much that you're like man I can't I can't take any more of this so I think Coupled with uh, my hip feeling as good as it had felt in a few years, working with those guys, uh, getting some early confidence going, I think that helped me a lot. And uh, I can honestly say no, uh, playing the way I did didn't, uh, didn't sway me. And I think that's uh, part of the reason that I felt I do feel at peace with my decision. Um, because obviously it would be much harder than if, if I had felt otherwise. Let's go to Kerry Crowley. Uh, Buster, congratulations. Coming out of Florida State and joining the Giants organization with the lofty expectations that were upon you, what were your kind of wildest dreams for your tenure in Major League Baseball? And when you think back to where you were then and where you are now, how, how do you reflect on all you accomplished? Yeah, I, I mean, Kristen probably remembers this. I, I can remember in high school being heartbroken uh, about losing a state championship. Our high school had never won a state championship. And uh, then moving on to Florida State, uh, we had Mike Martin there, uh, kind of getting towards the end of his career, uh, never won a college World Series, and uh, wasn't able to accomplish that. And it was truly just what, what I wanted was to win. I wanted to win a, a championship. and. Uh, I, mean, I can remember running to the mound in 2010, and, and honestly, the thoughts going through my head were what just happened. I mean, it was, it was uh, an understatement to say a dream come true. Uh, Boach getting to, to win his first. Mike Murphy here in the audience today getting to win his first. Uh, so many other people. Uh, again, I just go back to the relationships and the memories uh, that are made along the way. Uh, but when you go back in your mind and you think about why is that special to you, it's, it's because of the people you got to share it with. And uh, if it was people I didn't enjoy being around or didn't have respect for, it wouldn't mean as much to me. Let's go to Chris Haft. Hi, Buster. I think uh, I speak for my counterparts when I say that it was a, a privilege and a pleasure to have covered all or part or some of your career. Thanks, we, Chris. We thank you 
I'm sure. Um, I remember a t talk we had in 2012, early in, the, in, the, in that year or that season, and you made a comment or a remark about um, we're all going to be done someday. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, what a, what a unique thing for a third-year player in a third year in the majors to say that sort of thing. You know, you earlier in, this, in your talk, your, in your remarks, you mentioned perspective. Was that, was that kind of, did you, did you consciously try to maintain that perspective? You know, if you just have one hand on that wheel, so to, so to speak, even while you were thriving as a player. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I tried to. I, I wasn't always good at it. Um, don't laugh. Um, but I, I do. I, I remember driving in the ballpark one day uh, early in my career. I, I'm not sure when, and was feeling feeling the pressure. I probably wasn't hitting the way I wanted to hit, and I uh, was trying to rationalize everything in my brain as I had my quiet time driving in, and uh, I grew up like a lot of people my age, uh, big Braves fans. And I started to think about those guys. And uh, I, I had the realization that whether you play till you're 27, you're 30, you're 35, or you're 40, uh, the game continues to move on. And, and not to be callous, but people have other things in their lives that are more important. This is obviously a great thing that we all get to share and experience together. But those guys that I looked up to so much, uh, were they still around? So I'm sure. Um, but I think the main thing I took away from my internal conversation that I was having with myself is uh, you're just, you're not more important than you think you are. You're not as important as you think you are. and. Uh, it, and it, it helped take pressure off of me by doing that. Let's go all the way in the back, Robert Flores. Oh, okay. I think you're going to miss most. And the second question, now that you no longer have a season to prepare for, are PTA media, uh, meetings in your immediate future? What are you looking forward to doing now? Yeah. Well, I mean, specifically, what am I going to miss? I'll miss the people, um, number one. Uh, I'll, miss, uh, I'll miss what I talked about, about not, having, not the, having the chance to share in that common objective and goal that's started all the way back in February and carries until the end of October. Um, yeah, the friendships, you know, there will be people that I don't, I don't get to see as much that I've seen for a long time. Uh, the competition, um, there'll be a lot of things. Um, there'll be a lot of things I won't, too, to be honest. Um, and, you know, I, I think in 